Uh, thank you everyone for coming and joining this presentation. Uh, as Arthur said, uh, today the goal of this talk will be uh, focused on Ansible dynamic inventory. Uh, before that, let me introduce a little bit. Uh, I am Gabriel uh, Altamirano or Goodman. Uh, both are correct. And I joined Software uh, uh, five months ago, and then uh, I decided to participate uh, giving this talk, which I think is a very interesting topic for you all that are trying to, uh, to implement a solution based on a configuration management tool. And I will focus more on Ansible and dynamic inventory. So uh, the agenda for uh, this talk will be like to give a quick introduction to Ansible. Then we will review, um, uh, we will compare which and what is an a static inventory versus a dynamic inventory. Then we will move to kit groups, which is a very interesting future uh, for uh, dynamic to create a dynamic inventory. Then we will go and uh, I have prepared a demo for you all. Uh, the goal of this demo is to show you how you can work with uh, dynamic inventory. And then uh, we will review some alternatives to Ansible. Um, finally, I will give you some uh, recommendations and best practices based on my experience using uh, Ansible and dynamic inventory. So let's start with uh, with the introduction to Ansible. Well, uh, I think that most of you know that Ansible uh, is an open source IT automation engine, which uh, can do a lot of things. Uh, but uh, one of those things that do uh, uh, very good is configuration management. Uh, this tool can be also uh, be focused to, to automate uh, like your provisioning or orchestrate your infrastructure. But today we will focus more on the side of configuration management, which I think is uh, the best uh, thing that Ansible does. So before uh, going to uh, and review Ansible dynamic inventories and all of that, I would like to I would like to review uh, some of the con core concepts that uh, will be helpful for this uh, for this talk. Uh, so some of these core concepts uh, are very important because uh, all of them apply uh, for uh, maybe more advanced uh, topics. So let's start with the control node. Uh, the control node is basically uh your main um your main node this is the machine where you run your ansible cli tool then you have your managed nodes which are the hosts where uh, you apply the configuration that you want from your control node uh, then we have the concept of inventory uh, which is basically a list of managed nodes provided by one or more inventory sources uh, also, we have the concept of a playbook, which uh, basically contains, this is a file that contains play and is the basic unit of Ansible execution. And in top, inside of these uh, playbooks and plays, we have tasks, which are uh, the definition of an action. Basically, these are this is the core of the playbooks and the tasks, because this is what uh, will be applied to your managed nodes. And finally, we have the concept of plugins, which is are just pieces of code that span Ansible's core capabilities. Um, so, in order to uh, to to be more clear about these concepts, uh, let's draw these concepts uh, very quickly, just uh, to understand these concepts better. Uh, so basically we have, first of all, we have the concept of uh, a node control, which is a uh, server for, because I am like not very uh, <laughs> good with uh, the pen, but uh, let's, one second. Well, uh, this uh, thing here is like the node control in Ansible. 
which is where Ansible uh, lives. Uh, this is a, an instance where uh, you can place in like uh, your infrastructure, but also you can have this node control outside of your infrastructure, which I will show you in the demo. And this is the node control, and basically then we have some uh, hosts, which are also some instances in your infrastructure. These hosts basically are uh, in AWS, they are basically easy to instances, and, and in Google Cloud, this can be compute instances, or on-premise, it can be like uh, some, uh, some servers installed on some uh, over some hardware. So basically, uh, a, a good thing about Ansible is that uh, Ansible is agentless, which means that you don't need to install anything on this code, uh, which is uh, very good because uh, you don't need to add uh, additional configuration uh, to your code in order to manage them. And the way that uh, Ansible works in this case is uh, this push the configuration that you want to apply to your host. Usually, uh, what other tools uh, do is that uh, they do this process uh, the other way around, in which uh, you need to install some agents here. And then those agents pull the information from your node controller which is uh, different here in this case in Ansible. But basically this is the, the, the concept of node control uh, and, and host or manage nodes. So now let's go to the, uh, to the concept of uh, yep, one second. Let me see if I can erase this. Um, now let's go to the concept of uh, having your, uh, sorry for that. The concept of playbook is basically, we can see it like just a file. And this file usually uh, lives in your node control. It is your node control and this file lives here, right? And inside of this playbook, you have uh, several places maybe. And this place contains tasks. And which are equal to action. Basically, the most important thing uh, we can see like uh, our tasks because those are the actions that will be applied to your uh, managed nodes. Um, so the last concept that I would like to review with you is the concept of an inventory. Um, the inventory basically is also another file. And in this file, we can uh, uh, you, we can find the configuration of all managed nodes. If we think about this is our whole host or managed nodes, right? And how Ansible knows that uh, you want to apply the configuration to sustain a host is because the information to connect to this host are stored in a file, and this file contains maybe the IP of the of the host, the SSH user, or the port. So basically, uh, so the inventory basically is just a file, which contains the information of your host that you want to apply uh, some. Uh, configuration or uh, anything that you want to to, to do uh, with your uh, host. And those are the core concepts that I wanted to review with you all because th those are very important. Uh, sorry, because I am not the best drawing, so maybe 
these are not <laughs> like the best uh, uh, pictures you can see, but uh, the idea is here. So after um, we have review uh, all of these, we can move to what is an static inventory. Uh, basically, an static inventory is a, uh, is a file that uh, has uh, mainly two formats. It can be a YAML file, or it can be also like an any like file, like this one or this. Uh, in this file, as I said, you can find some information like IP addresses and manage nodes, and some extra arguments like the stage user. And here you can uh, you can see an image of how uh, this file looks like. This format is in the any uh, any like uh, format file. So this is the any format, and you can uh, also you can have here uh, declarations of groups, which are these ones, um, which if you see contain the names of your uh, of your host, which already have uh, some information there, like the antivirus host, uh, which basically is the IP uh, of the of those nodes. Uh, and basically, uh, static inventories are hard coded inventories. This is a manual process. So, if you want to uh, make an inventory for your infrastructure and you uh, want to use this approach, you need to write down your uh, inventory file by your own and be sure that uh, this file uh, complains, uh, complies with um, the format that Ansible uh, requires. So if we think that maybe uh, we have like, for example, two nodes, three nodes, four nodes, uh, writing down this file is very easy because uh, as you can see, there, are, there is not like a lot of information here. But if you think that maybe you have hundreds of nodes in your infrastructure, writing this file can be very uh, complicated and prone to errors. Uh, maybe uh, we forgot to, to, to put the correct IP, or maybe uh, we include one node here, which in reality should be here. So all of those things happen, and that's the reason why uh, if you can avoid to use a static inventory, that's, uh, that will be much better. But also, um, if you think that uh, you can, like, um, if you have a very, uh, uh, an infrastructure that has uh, just a few nodes, uh, you can go with an static inventory because maybe you don't need to spend a lot, a lot of time uh, with configure, configuring other things. So, and here are just uh, some examples of uh, the static inventory. On the left hand here, you can find uh, an static inventory like a uh, YAML file. And on the right hand, you can you can uh, find here an static inventory in the any format file. Uh, so both of these approaches are correct to Ansible. Uh, I think that uh, maybe it's easier to read on the any format file because uh, it's it's uh, simpler than I think that the YAML file. And also when you start to nest, uh, for example, groups like uh, here we have a group. And then uh, maybe uh, we want to nest uh, this group into another group. Uh, this is more, I think, that is uh, easier to read here in a mini format file, like in Ansible, when you start to, uh, to nest a lot of uh, um, blocks, and then maybe that can be prone to errors. Uh, so I would recommend to use uh, the mini format file if you want to do your static inventory. Both, but both approaches are totally fine. So once that we have reviewed the concept of a static inventory, now we let's move to the dynamic inventory, which is the goal of this uh, talk. Basically, a, dy a dynamic inventory is just an inventory generated on the fly using a script, right? Uh, those scripts are usually written in Python, but other languages can be used. And to use, uh, you can write your own script, uh, but also if uh, there is uh, a script that already exists, it's much better 
to use that script because it's uh, it can be already tested by by a lot of uh, uh, people and um, and also some of them are provided by uh, the main cloud providers like Amazon or Google Cloud. In this case, to use uh, the to leverage uh, this future uh, for AWS. We have uh, the uh, Amazon AWS EC2 inventory plugin, but if you want to apply uh, the same, uh, or if you want to leverage the, this feature for uh, GCP, you can also use uh, the GCP uh, compute plugin. And since here the inventory file, the inventory uh, is generated on the fly, we don't have a file uh, like in the case of a static inventory, but uh, we can see like more or less on uh, how they look like, like in this image. Uh, basically, uh, it also groups your host uh, based on some uh, specifications, which we'll review later on the demo. So, um, yep. So I don't know if up to this point, everything is clear. Um, if not, uh, ask questions or leave your comments in the chat. Maybe I can review it. Uh, if not, I can move to <coughs> key the group. Uh, the, the key the groups are, uh, we can see this like uh, a future, um, to uh, to create custom groups. Basically, uh, what we want to do using Ansible is that we want to group our host uh, because they share some characteristics or because maybe we want to apply some configuration to a group of hosts instead of uh, maybe to other hosts. We can think about like a web server, maybe we want to apply some configuration to some web server, but not to the database servers. Uh, so that's the reason of, of grouping host uh, because it's easier to apply some configuration. And also from the administration point, uh, it's easier to manage your infrastructure in this way. So basically, kit groups uh, allow uh, to allow to us to create custom groups uh, because if we remember in uh, when we reviewed the topic of static inventories, we have groups here. Right, uh, but since in when you are using the dynamic inventory, you don't have a, a, an inventory file before executing your Ansible action. Uh, you need a way to um, you need a way to group your uh, your host, and that's the reason of kit group. Um, basically, kit group uh, are constructed uh, on variable values. And the existence of uh, those variables determines group membership. Like in this image, <clears throat> we can see at the top of this image here, uh, the AWS EC2. Uh, I will explain, uh, we will review also this uh, information in the demo. <clears throat> but basically, uh, this is how a group looks like in a um, dynamic inventory. Uh, we can see here the AWS EC2 group. And then uh, we have other nodes like this one, uh, grouped by uh, a kind of tag. Uh, and then also uh, all these groups are uh, grouped by tags that we uh, apply to the EC2 instances. And now it's time for the demo, which I think is the most important thing about this, uh, this talk. Uh, because here we will review uh, the concepts and also uh, you can see like uh, how uh, dynamic inventory uh, works in in a, in a real example. Um, uh, so let me let me one second. Now let me. Uh, let me know if uh, you can see my screen with the Ansible dynamic repo. I yes, we can see. Okay, cool. So uh, I have prepared a repository for, 
for you all that uh, I will share with Arthur and maybe he can share with you all in the workplace. Uh, basically, this uh, repository contains um, some files that uh, will allow uh, that will help you to create uh, some infrastructure, some uh, Kubernetes clusters uh, with the auto scanning feature, and then you can play with uh, those uh, Kubernetes clusters, applying some uh, Ansible uh, configuration, and also uh, you can test uh, how the Ansible dynamic inventory works. Uh, this uh, repository has uh, the file structure, which explains uh, what is uh, each file. And then it also uh, has some prerequisites that you need to uh, set up before like uh, playing with this repository. Um, and then you will find a section on how to use your repo. And uh, finally, uh, you will have the opportunity to work with uh, Ansible dynamic inventories and run some uh, configuration for your uh, Kubernetes uh, nodes. So I will show this uh, repository. Uh, well, basically, uh, before starting this uh, this meeting, since I <clears throat> I needed to create uh, two Kubernetes clusters. I have already created those clusters because it uh, those take some time to uh, to create. So that's the reason I I created before uh, this meeting. But basically, uh, I created those uh, clusters with uh, EKS CTL, and this is the uh, configuration file to create your uh, your clusters. So <clears throat> now we will have uh, we will work with two Kubernetes clusters, which are uh, each of uh, those clusters has two instances, uh, two nodes, which you can see here. And um, and we will uh, see how uh, you can configure these nodes uh, using Ansible. Um, so let's move to this. Uh, this is my Visual Studio um, uh, application, and now, uh, when when you are working with uh, with Ansible and with, and when you have uh, some configuration, it's always better to uh, to create a repository uh, and keep your configuration there. Like in this case. Maybe uh, I have placed all the configurations and files here because uh, this is a demo. Uh, a demo. Uh, so, but if you are uh, implementing this in, in your production system, it's better to have your just one repository with your Ansible information there. So, um, I have created uh, one Docker file which uh, already installed Ansible. And also copy uh, the configuration into uh, this um, this container. It's always better to use uh, containers when you are trying to implement Ansible because it's easier to replicate and also uh, it doesn't matter if it it is destroyed. You can recreate it and then uh, apply again the the configuration. So I have already created the image that is uh, shown here in the in the repository. These these are the steps uh, to create the image, well to build the image. So you need to have uh, an SSH key in order to be able to connect to um, to your uh, host, and then you can run uh, your Docker image. Uh, we will review. Uh, I will tell you how. Um, other approaches instead of using SSH keys in AWS, if you don't want to use uh, SSH keys. And so let's go to here. I will run my uh, my Docker image. As you can see, I, ha I am uh, passing the AWS credentials. Uh, that are placed on my local host to uh, the Ansible uh, container uh, because those are uh, the credentials are needed in order to Ansible to grant me access 
uh, to some services. In this case, EC2 instances. So once the device have connected to uh, to this um, to my uh, container, and uh, I can start like working with Antivolt. Um, basically, uh, one of the uh, important concepts here is that you, that you can ping your um, your Antivolt host in order to know if all of them are up or maybe uh, some of them are uh, are not present. Like you can see here, Ansible has like, uh, uh, has created a, a, a list of uh, holes that are already in my infrastructure. If you notice, I don't have uh, any static inventory here. It's just Ansible that goes and connects to AWS and then uh, get the information needed about uh, those um, those instances that are here. Uh, these are the instances that appear in your uh, Ansible ping here. This is the way how you can, like, for example, know uh, if you are ready to apply your configuration to your host. Because if you ping uh, first your host, and all of them return, uh, uh, in this case, uh, uh, a pong. Uh, that will be enough to know that you can apply your configuration to your host. So, um, but one of the things is, uh, how can I apply uh, my configuration to just to a group of these hosts? Because if we see here in the EC2 uh, console, uh, we know, we can see that some of these hosts are part of a uh, Kubernetes cluster, like this one, uh, the subset two and the subset two here are part of the same Kubernetes cluster, but not this uh, node. So let's think that uh, you have a task where you need to maybe to configure something on just uh, the nodes for the Kubernetes cluster number one. So if I apply, uh, if I don't have a way to group those codes, it's impossible to apply. Uh, well, it's not impossible, but it will be more difficult to apply your configuration to a specific host. Because if I have just, like I said before, if I just have four hosts, uh, applying this configuration, is, it's very easy. But let's think that maybe you are working with an infrastructure where you have uh, 100 hosts. Imagine how uh, uh, how long it will take for you uh, to apply the configuration for each of these folks. And that's the reason of, of having groups. So how Ansible can, uh, if I go, um, yeah, I will, okay. Let me, uh, one second, let me review. Mm, yep. If I go and grab in Ansible uh, the group that I uh, I have already in my infrastructure, I can see that there is a general group like is AWS EC2, which contains all the hosts in my infrastructure in a specific region. I will show you also the configuration for this, but basically we can see like uh, we can group hosts based on uh, also on tabs. We can see here that the, there is one tag that is that uh, the value is name. Uh, well, the 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 key of the tag is the uh, is name like here, and the value is uh, software one ng ng uh, one node, and this tag uh, is applied to to two nodes in our infrastructure, and we can uh, like validate that this information is correct. Like for example, if I go to my EC2 instances and then like for example, I select this uh, node and then I go to the tag section. I, I can see that the tag that I am seeing in my Ansible uh, inventory graph are the ones that are here. Uh, so basically what uh, Ansible is doing is grouping these uh, these codes 
using the uh, the tags here. And you can see that in this case, it's easy to administrate your infrastructure because you already know that maybe uh, you have uh, the the tax name with the value of software one ng one node, uh, which also is the same tag that contains this uh, this node, which is part of the same Kubernetes cluster. And it's, if you go and review the uh, the tags for the software uh, for the second group of the cluster, you will see that. Uh, for this uh, for this node, you have a different tag. So this is the way how uh, you can group your uh, your code, and it's much preferable to 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 use uh, this approach because, as you can see, I don't need to spend any time writing an inventory file. As soon as I have configured uh, my Ansible and have uh, put the information needed. I can create an inventory very quickly, and I can apply uh, certain tasks to those uh, specific groups. So, if you ask which configuration do I need to to set uh, this um, to set uh, this uh, this feature, basically uh, we need to specify which uh, plugin we want to use. In this case, it's AWS EC2. And basically, we are telling uh, which inventory you use, but this is not really an inventory. It's just uh, a file that contains the information needed to create that inventory and how it will create, uh, how Ansible will create that inventory. And there are some extra like parameters like the private key that, that you want to use, and also maybe the remote user that will be used to connect uh, via SSH to your host. And the AWS EC2 uh, YAML file, which is the uh, the one that we refer in the inventory uh, in the inventory uh, configuration, we can see here basically that uh, we are telling uh, which plugin to use, in which region uh, we want to use uh, to create the dynamic inventory, and basically this is the concept of kit groups that we review in our presentation, which are the future to create custom groups. But you can think uh, like, uh, for example, what happens if I, I don't use kit group? Is it impossible to, to create a dynamic inventory in Ansible? And the answer is no. We can remove the kit groups from this configuration and you will be, uh, and also you, you can generate your inventory uh, without any issues, but if we remember the concept of using kit group is that we can create custom groups. What happened, for example, if I remove that configuration in my uh, AWS EC2 YAML file? So we can review the, the output. And you can see now that we are not seeing the same output like here. And the reason is because uh, Ansible, uh, when when we are specifying the kit group's future, we are telling how we uh, we want to show our group or how we want to create our custom group. In this case, uh, I have specified that I want to create uh, these groups. Uh, let me make a little bigger. That I want to create uh, these custom groups based on the tags. And I want that uh, when they, when Antibol show me uh, the output, I want to profit uh, those tags with the uh, word tag here. But if I don't specify anything like here, I can see that the only information that is shown is my uh, AWS. There is a default group. Uh, when you are working in uh, with uh, dynamic inventories, there is a default group which contains all your EC2 instances in this case, which the name of this group is AWS EC2. And you can see there is no ungroup uh, instances because all of these instances are grouped in AWS EC2. So the answer to that question is yes, I can work without kid groups. The only downside of doing that is that you cannot create custom groups. And obviously, if you want to apply your configuration to certain codes, 
you need to group them before applying them because right now, based on this information, I don't know to uh, which cluster uh, um, uh, are part uh, these EC2 instances. And so another question could be like, hey, Gabriel, this is the only way to create uh, custom groups just using tags? And the answer is no. You can uh, also create custom groups based on other keys, like I will show you in a minute. Uh, let me type. There are a lot of uh, ways to create custom groups. This is just another way just to show you that uh, using uh, that is not the only way to create a custom group. Yes. And let's recreate the inventory uh, graph. And now you can see that uh, there is a new group that is uh, this group is based on the uh, instance type that I have specified uh, here in my um, YAML file. I have specified, hey, use uh, to create this group, use the instance instance type, and then prefix uh, the group with the instance type string, which is what we can see here. Instance type t t2 with mouse. And we can go to the console and review. Um, we can review if that's correct. And we can see here the instance type for all of these uh, nodes. You can uh, also group uh, your nodes in this way. Maybe, for example, you don't have uh, all your instances doesn't have the same instance type. Maybe. Uh, 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 maybe uh, some of those uh, nodes are bigger or things like that. Uh, yep. And um, let's. Uh, let's come back with the same configuration that I have. I had before. And now let's recreate again. As you can see, uh, Ansible uh, showed you this information very quickly. Uh, as soon as you have configured your uh, uh, your Ansible tool, uh, and this is very helpful because uh, the goal of this demo is. Let's think that maybe uh, you have a task. Uh, even in the, the project that I am working right now, uh, uh, like a couple of weeks ago, uh, we wanted to apply some uh, configuration to the uh, Kubernetes node. And then uh, to apply that configuration, we have a lot of uh, nodes. But the problem here is that uh, I don't know, I think that maybe most of you have worked with AWS or uh, GCP, and you know the concept of user data when you are trying to configure your instances or on boot time. And user data, or uh, which applies the same concept in GCP and AWS, uh, user data allows you to configure your instances on boot time. But what happens if I need to configure those instances when they are running? And I don't want to reboot them. I don't want to shoot down them. I don't want to uh, delete them and recreate. Uh, so if you think that maybe you have two nodes, that's totally fine. But let's think that you need to configure uh, 50 nodes or 70 nodes. That's a lot of nodes to do this manually. And also imagine that if you are trying to, if your option is to recreate those instances, you need to shoot down all of them and then to uh, spin up again. Uh, so that's a very big uh, problem that you, you will have. Uh, 
In this case, uh, the goal of this uh, playbook is to set the, um, the garbage collection, uh, collection future in uh, the kubelet nodes, which basically uh, allows you to set some threshold to, um, to start removing your, uh, your Docker images and Docker containers that are not used. This, basically, I want to set these extra features here in my uh, Kubernetes nodes. And I will show you uh, before applying that configuration, how, uh, let's see if, uh, let me see if this configuration is not already applied. And, Mm, yep. Like for example, this node, uh, let's think that we want to configure the kubelet service, in this case, in those nodes. And we can see here the output. This is uh, how this service uh, was started and which, uh, and it shows you which parameters were used during this configuration. And what basically I want to do is to add some extra configuration here in order to uh, to set the garbage uh, collector feature, right? Uh, I don't have any configuration yet here, and I want to use Ansible and Dynamic Inventory to apply this configuration. So uh, basically, I know that uh, this node uh, is part of the Kubernetes cluster number one of this uh, of this cluster, cluster uh, number one. And I want to apply that configuration to to that um, to that uh, group of uh, of hosts. So basically, first of all, I need to identify which is the name of that group, and I can use uh, this uh, name of the group like here. I am I, I am pretty sure that these hosts are part of the same cluster because we have reviewed that before. So I just need to copy the name of this uh, of this group, and then we can apply or Ansible uh, file. Um, I hope that I will apply this correct. Um, let me do that. If you have questions or uh, you want to add additional information or share with uh, with us something. Uh, about uh, Ansible and dynamic inventories, feel free to do that. Uh, so like uh, coming back to the output, you can see here uh, that uh, the kubelet config has been applied to uh, this post because you see the output of change. That uh, means that something has changed in the configuration. And then uh, I am running uh, just a handler, which also is a concept in Ansible. You can review them. And uh, basically, after applying this configuration, I am telling uh, Ansible to run, to restart the service on this host. So let's go to the EC2 instance again, and let's review if now we have an extra configuration here. Gabriel, sorry, we have uh, just one question in our chat. Uh, should I read or you can read? Uh, let, give me one second. Let me. Uh... Okay, cool. Okay, the question is we can create inventory groups based on any information obtained from cater facts models, right? Uh, can we continue to create group host variables for dynamic inventory? How will that look like? Can we continue to create group host variables for? Uh, okay, okay. The first question is: uh, We can create inventory with gator fact. Um, well, the, this is a, a good question. Uh, you can you can uh, create your uh, your groups based on uh, on that information. Uh, as soon as that information is already in your uh, in your in the configuration of your nodes, 
So the interfax uh, basically, uh, well, uh, the reason why I didn't talk a lot about like some of the concepts in Ansible is because Ansible has a lot of things to talk. But basically, facts uh, we can see that are, are um, facts are like um, some. Uh, I, I forgot the the words are like um, some characteristics uh, of your nodes, and all those facts are collected when Ansible, uh, for example, tries to create your uh, dynamic inventory. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, I don't know how, maybe which fact you want to use, but I will say that, yes, you can create uh, dynamic inventories based on that, or inventory groups based on that. And can we continue to create group host variables for dynamic to create group host? Okay, you mean like, uh, like the one that is uh, like I show you in the static inventory, right? When you have, for example, your uh, your um, the name of your host, and then you can group uh, them. Yes, you can do that, but uh, also it requires uh, the use of filters in your uh, AWS EC2 JAML file here. Uh, this is a very simple configuration to create custom groups, but also you can create uh, more uh, complex groups using uh, filters and also using maybe other parameters in your kit group. Uh, but yes, uh, you can create uh, your inventory based on those hosts. Uh, yeah, sorry, uh, I had a, I had a little bit uh, different question. So, for example, mm -hmm. now I have the stati static environment, uh, the static inventory. Sorry, and mm -hmm. uh, I have some specific variables for some groups. Uh, so, if I use the dynamic inventory, uh, can I uh, prepare some? the specific variables for the groups that will be generated. So for example, I know for that uh, for C2 instances, I want to have some some special variables. Uh, I uh, And uh, if I have the first cluster, I want to have these variables for this first cluster. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, you understand. Uh, yes. You can do that. Uh, there are some like, like for example, here, you can apply uh, some uh, variables to uh, your uh, all your hosts in general, uh, like for example, the remote user, but also you can apply some specific uh, variables for your, uh, your groups. Uh, I don't have an example right now, to be honest, and mm -hmm. I didn't prepare anything related to that. But uh, yes, I am thinking like maybe for example, for one group to have, uh, uh, I don't know, an specific port, right? And then yeah. maybe for a second uh, group of hosts in your cluster, you want to use a different port. And mm -hmm. which uh, you know, you already know that configuration and you already know that uh, which variables you want to set before creating your dynamic inventory, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, the answer is yes. I, I don't have any prepared yet. Um, it, it will requ require maybe uh, to dig a little bit more into the AWS EC2 plugin, uh, just to know, because there are a lot of extra features that maybe I don't, I'm not showing uh, here right now. Uh, but uh, obviously you can like um, take a look on that information. Uh, sorry for not having anything useful uh, now. Okay, thanks. Yep. And so we we can uh, come back to the configuration. And here you can see that, uh, for example, I have uh, applied my uh, garbage collector uh, uh, thresholds to my kubelet service, and these services are running uh, fine. Uh, so as you can see, this was very quickly, and even 
if you notice, there are some specific uh, values that you cannot like meet in your configuration because, for example, here we have the instance ID, which I need to uh, uh, to take into account when I want to configure this because I cannot set the same instance ID for all my nodes. And how you can do that also is uh, the concept of uh, you can. Um, like uh, create those types of configuration if you use your facts and the facts are the characteristics of those nodes uh, sorry for not having an example of uh, and showing you the facts but for example in this case uh, i have used uh, these facts which are basically the cluster name and uh, also i have set the node group name and obviously the instance ID. That's the reason why when Ansible applies this configuration, uh, uh, Ansible already knows uh, which instance ID apply to this uh, new configuration because you cannot hard code the values here. Uh, well, you can, but uh, you will mess up your uh, Kiplet service and it, you will be in trouble after that. That's the reason why you need to use facts um last i said uh facts are, are some characteristics of uh, your node which you can use in advantage when you uh, run your playbook um and yep uh if if you have like for example um if you then apply in this uh, let's say that uh that I don't know if this configuration is already applied on my uh, host. Uh, since Ansible is imperative, you don't need to worry about like running and getting the same command uh, for your uh, dynamic inventory and even for your static inventory. As soon as uh, Ansible detects that this configuration has been applied, it uh, won't do anything more. Uh, so you uh, you can um, apply this configuration as many times as you want and uh, you will be fine so but what happened if for example i have like um for some reason i then realize that i need to change uh, the value of this uh, of the threshold so now if i run ansible again uh, as, as soon as I run Ansible, uh, I can apply this new uh, configuration to my uh, to my host. Like you can see here, there is a change, and um, and that's it. Then you can run a handler and restart the service. And if I go again to my uh, EC2 instance, I can see that uh, this configuration is already applied. Now I have a threshold of 15. And before that, I have a, uh, a threshold of 10. So you start to see the power of uh, Ansible. Uh, since if you are trying to manage a lot of uh, nodes, uh, this Ansible will become uh, very helpful for you all. And uh, But let's think also that maybe um, for some reason, this uh, since I have configured this Kubernetes cluster with auto scanning feature, uh, let's see that for some reason this instance uh, was terminated, or um, or there was a new instance that was created uh, after uh, I have shut down this instance. So. This is the, the the real power of dynamic inventory. Like you don't need to worry about like uh, shooting down an instance, remove those instances, create new ones, because as as soon as Ansible detects that there is a new instance, uh, you can like um, apply again the configuration for Ansible. So I can. Uh, Ping again my nodes just to see what, what is the result of this uh, execution. 
like you can see, uh, Antibol has already uh, resolved, uh, has already uh, uh, has already pink um, these three holes, but the last one that I shoot down uh, is already unreachable. So it's it's very nice because you can uh, see very quickly which holes are up and we, which holes maybe are not reachable. And as soon as this uh, node disappears and creates a new one, I will have uh, again false nodes here. Also, I can ping, uh, I can also ping this, um, these nodes, these holes uh, by group. I can use one of the uh, tags here, for example, this one. And with this uh, command, I, I am telling you, oh, uh, oh that, that, that wasn't expected. <laughs> One second. I don't remember if that's the correct. Uh, ideally, this will be just uh, the group that I have created before. Uh, let me. Yes. One second, let me review my repository, which I know that. Hmm. Okay, limit. Okay, let's take this. Hmm. I tried this command and just <laughs> yeah, now it's working. I don't know why the other maybe I took one tag that contains all these four uh holes. That's the reason why I ping all of them. But now I, like you can see here, you can also ping uh two holes based on uh, on those uh custom groups that, that you generated while using dynamic inventory and now you can see that there is an uh two holes in the same group because um in my easy to control control right now i have four instances running and now if i come back and apply um my previous configuration to uh to those nodes what I need to to see in the output is that this configuration will be applied just to the uh, to the new host that was uh, uh, that was spin up uh, by um, by the auto scaling feature before, uh, and you can see that right now here uh, that new host uh, we have applied the new configuration to that new host. And like uh, the the code that was uh, previously created doesn't uh, suffer any change or doesn't have any modification, and that's uh, totally uh, that's totally fine and it's very helpful because uh, you don't need to worry about like what was your new code in your infrastructure. And then if I apply again this configuration, I won't see. Uh, uh, I won't see any change uh, because it's already applied uh, in my in my nodes, and this is the 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 powerful of uh, of Antibol because I am just applying the configuration for this uh, uh, for this uh, group of holes, and the the second group of nodes that I have that is, are related to uh, my uh, other Kubernetes cluster are not touched. Uh, which is uh, really good because if you think that maybe you have uh, one Kubernetes cluster uh, for your for testing, another one for uh, QA, and another one for production, maybe you want to apply these changes just to to your development uh, Kubernetes cluster and see if those changes uh, work as expected, and then I uh, you can apply the same changes to your uh, 
to your production Kubernetes cluster. But you already know that that configuration works perfectly. And it's uh, basically you just need to change the, the name of your group. And that will be enough to uh, to apply that configuration. And this is uh, what I wanted to show you uh, uh, regarding to the demo. We are running out of time. So uh, let me uh, very quickly go to uh, my presentation and continue with the last part of the of the presentation. If you don't like Ansible, there are a lot of tools in the market like Steve Engine, Puppet, uh, Chef, and Salt Stack. Uh, most of them, uh, if not all of them, uh, you need to install an, an agent in your host and also uh, to be prepared to configure your infrastructure to support the uh, number of nodes in your, uh, because all those agents will uh, pull your, uh, configuration from your central node or your controller. So uh, you need to configure your controller with uh, the necessary resources to support uh, those uh, pools. Um, and finally, my recommendations on best practices, uh, use static inventory when you don't recreate your infrastructure often, like on-premise. Uh, it's totally fine uh, use the static inventory. There are not uh, something bad with the static inventory, but uh, if you are working maybe in a cloud environment when everything changes frequently, it's um, I would say that it's much better to use uh, dynamic inventory. Uh, also, uh, you need to uh, take into account that uh, when you are running uh, your dynamic inventory, it can take some time to create your uh, inventory. And as we saw, when you have just a few nodes, that's not a big problem, but maybe let's think that you have 100 nodes uh, that uh, you need to, to create an inventory, or if you want to make a ping to those hosts, maybe uh, it will take some time to take into account that. that. Um, also another uh, another recommendation on best practices, uh, in my demo, I use my uh, AWS credentials and my SSH key to uh, connect to those instances because my container was outside of my uh, infrastructure, uh, and that's the reason I wa uh, that's the reason why I use my credentials and my SSH key. But usually, uh, it's much better to install your uh, Ansible uh, node controller inside of your VPC or inside of your Google project if you are working working with Google in the same uh, like network. Uh, so if you install Ansible in, in, in inside of your VPC or your Google project, you can uh, take advantage of AEM roles and service accounts. As soon as you configure the EC2 uh, full access to your role and in service accounts, uh, you can grant um, the OS login and OS admin permissions to uh, connect to your uh, EC2 instances, uh, you will be okay. Um, if you don't plan to use roles or service, like in my case, uh, try to uh, pass your credentials and key at execution time and don't uh, commit your uh, that information in your repository. And if you are working with Jenkins, uh, sorry, if you are working with Jenkins, you can automatize that process also. And finally, um, uh, also, if you are planning to use SSH keys, uh, that's totally fine. Uh, add your SSH key at execution time, just not to um, to to have your a container image with your key inside of it. Uh, and um, um, a better approach could be like to use the STEM uh, plugin. Uh, which allows you to connect to your uh, in AWS to your EC2 instances uh, without using SSH key, which will be uh, more secure and maybe uh, it will be like a better approach. But also take into account that you need to do some extra configuration and extra work to do that. Um, and I think that that's all from my side. Uh, thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for attending this presentation. I hope that uh, this information will be helpful for you and at least uh, 
you can start uh, playing around with uh, antibody dynamic inventories and that's it. Uh, 